Well, a very good evening to everybody out there in TV land. You have joined us for Let's Talk Gunpla episode 28 with Uber's Cosplay here has joined me as he always does. By all means, all our contact information is right below. And so, Ben, where can they find you? We always ask that question. Where can right. they find you? Best place to find me if you're interested in my cosplay work or my model kit stuff is Instagram. Uh, it's U-B-E-R-S cosplay, all one word. I'm also on YouTube, Facebook, everything else. And I'm usually in here on Thursdays for Build and Paint Night as well. Awesome. And if you have any questions, by all means, drop it in the chat. I know we're streaming live on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. So if you have a question or a comment or you want to ask some sort of technical question, even about the art of Gunpla or the hobby of Gunpla or anime in general, by all means, drop it in the comment. I can't forget to also advise you to join our Discord if you have Discord or if you want to join it. I'm going to drop the link into our chat so that you're able to join it. The Discord's great because it kind of takes the conversation further. A lot of times we'll have people ask like, hey, you know, do you have this kit or do you have that kit or where can I find this or where can I find that? And I just direct them to you. Right. And uh, <laughs> it's also good because if you're, if you're a Gundam fan, that's where I put up all the stuff for what we're gonna, what's going to come out, what we're expecting. If I do pre-orders and stuff like that, I'll put information out there. And we also just in general talk a lot about Gundam, uh, anime, video games, all kinds of good stuff. Exactly. So, good and place if, to come and hang out. And there's uh, other channels in the Discord as well. So there's Gundam, anime, cosplay, like you were saying. So if you guys want to check that out, by all means. And of course, our contact information is below Flynn's Gaming FL. It's on our Instagram, uh, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. Everything you could possibly imagine is all there. So we really appreciate any follows or likes. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. And give that a little notification button, uh, bell uh, click, so that you can get notified when we actually go live and when we do videos and all that kind of cool stuff. So we, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this evening's Let's Talk Gumpla, we do have some really cool events coming up. So I know the first one, let's talk about what's coming up next Saturday as I pivot to find the website that I want to show them about Silver Spot. So why don't you take it away, uh, Ben, about right. what's happening Saturday. We're doing a limited seating event for a mecha anime movie. And this is personally my all-time favorite anime movie. It's Macross. Ooh. Do You Remember Love? Never shown in American theaters <laughs> because of a 30-plus year legal dispute. But if you guys are fans of anime, the legal dispute was just recently put to rest. So soon you will be able to watch this officially in the USA. I cannot wait. Only 35 years later. Right. Um, it is limited seating due to pandemic restrictions and everything. We're only letting 20 people in. So it is first come, first serve. If you guys are interested, PM me on uh, Instagram or Facebook or exactly. on the Discord. Exactly. Uh, we've already got quite a few uh, places taken, so don't wait if you want to get in. But um, if this is successful, we're going to try to do more get-togethers in the future with other anime movies. I've been talking with other people in the club. We're talking about seeing like, a really good movie like Red Line. Oh, cool. Which is a really, really cool anime movie by uh, Madhouse. There's tons and tons. You know, we've got 30 years worth of Gundam movies we could watch. We can even watch like other ones like Battle Royale. We can watch anything, like, <laughs> we, can watch anything we want on streaming or that we own we could put on. But the first thing I'm putting on is Macross. And I cannot wait to share it with you guys. Um, if you're already confirmed that you're going to come, uh, we're gathering in the lobby of the theater at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Um, the address for the theater and everything is available on our Discord, the Facebook and everything. But it's also, you can check and out. And I'm going to actually, yeah, somewhere. I'm going to actually pull it up right now, the one in Coconut Creek. So... If you guys arrive or have never gone to the Coconut Creek Plaza, we were there this past week mm -hmm. for our Mortal Kombat event. It's actually really easy to find. The Silver Spot, um, Silver Spot Cinema, Coconut Creek, right? Uh, Promenade, I think right. like the Promenade, right? And this is like an upscale movie theater too. They got food, they got yes. drinks, basically a full service bar. 100%. Big, nice, cushy seats, and it's only five bucks a head to get in for this movie. That's all we're charging, five bucks. Got to carry your own snacks and everything, but five bucks for a limited seating movie that has never been shown in America, I think that's hard to beat. And it's a Saturday night. Right. So, guys, super easy to find right off of Lines Road right here, and this is Wilds. It's in the Promenade right here, and you guys can see the theater is on the west side of the plaza. Tons of parking. There's a parking garage here. There's a parking garage back here. All free parking. There's eating uh, options as well. There's It's Sugar. There's a place that makes boba tea in here also, I heard. Um, so make a day of it, an evening of it. Like Ben said, it's Silver Spot Cinema. Silver Spot is a little bit more of a premium movie experience. Yeah. So as you can see, it's, you know, quite fancy. So that is this Saturday, the 8th. Yeah. 
at seven o'clock. Yeah, and this is a good chance too if you want to bring your plus one out and get her into mecha anime movies oh. because Macross is not just a great action movie. This is a love story, and it's a classic anime love story. So come check it out. Hundred percent. Tanchi Berry says, which movie again? So sorry, I didn't catch that. This is Macross. Do you remember love? I'm going to go to camera two so you can show them that. Yeah. So let's see if they can see it up front. And bam, there this you go. This is my DVD copy of the epilogue for the movie, Flashback 2012. But I've got the actual movie as well. We're going to be putting this on the big screen in glorious high definition. First time, as far as I'm aware, in America. <laughs> First time. We don't have to worry about certain people trying to sue us anymore. <laughs> And as you can see, guys, right here, also on our Facebook, I'm going to shift back over. I know we're moving a lot because we got. A, I'm moving quickly because we've got a lot of content to cover this evening. It's right here on the post, dated April 30th. I'll post again. I put Ben's uh, Facebook here as well as his email for cosplay. Right. Little shout description. Out, shout out to Lucas for doing this awesome. Hundred percent. Let's load, let's go in there a little deep. There you go. Look Mobile at that. Suit Theater 3000. <laughs> gotta love it. You know. So Lucas, thank you so much for. Uh, creating this for us you guys can see all the information here by all means reach out to ben through email or through dm and that's this saturday at 7 p.m at silver spot cinema in coconut creek it's going to be an amazing time right and i'm super I'm stoked really for looking it. forward to it so that is one thing that we got going on guys oh also uh, since we have it i like to give you guys updates as to what's going down at flynn's i just posted this wanted to let you guys know that tomorrow for the may 4th be with you we have our ten dollar tuesdays here at flynn's so we're going to do the free blue Mantha Milk uh, Boba Tea. You have to do the oh, Mantha God. Milk because of the mere fact of, you know, may the 4th be with you. So that's tomorrow from 5 p.m. 12 p.m. By all means, pop on in and enjoy a blue Mantha Milk Boba Tea. Right. So I think we had that. We had that. We had the movie coming up. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? Do we have any announcements? Um, oh, oh, right. Anime UI. Anime UI. So... There's some conventions coming up. As you guys know, we're here in Southeast Florida. I cannot so wait. So there's a, a number of conventions coming up that we have begin to um, get locked into. Um, one in particular is Anime EY. I believe they're the ones off of the Marriott and Cypress Creek. Yeah, right? it's, it's actually like like five minutes away from where my old place was. Exactly. It's like yeah, it's yeah. like it's right off 95. Super easy to find. Very close. Um, we will be uh, having hopefully it's all coming together. We're going to have a Gundam room. And the room is going to be dedicated to, obviously, all the Gundam Gunpla kits that we have for sale. Um, we plan to, hopefully, if Ben's available, we'll be able to do maybe, like, some sort of, you know, DIY or helmet yeah, thing again. Yeah, we're going to just know. kind of, like, have, like, a room where you can come and work on Gunpla. We'll, we'll have, probably show movies. Have, have the anime playing. We'll have tools. We'll have maybe, like, a couple kits out, like, from different people in the club because they want to display their stuff. Awesome, dude. Maybe we'll have a contest, too. All awesome. kinds of stuff. But yeah, please come check it out. So an anime EY, when, when is anime EY? November. November, right. November, yeah. okay. Uh, I want to say it's the weekend of the 12th and 14th. I don't know if I'm mad. Anime EY, right? Anime yeah. EY. E-W-I-W-A-I. There you go. November? Let's see. Yeah. Do we have it right? November 13th through the 15th. Well, bam. So you guys are able to check it out over here. Perfect. There you go. AnimeEY.com. Shout out to our friends at Anime EY. The 12th through the 14th, the three-day convention. Hopefully, we'll have a Gundam room there. And, excuse me, we also just got confirmation that the Sunrise, um, the City of Sunrise puts on a convention every year. Right. They'll be doing it November 14th, I believe it was, which yeah. is a Saturday. The last one got canceled because of the COVID thing. Yeah, so it was right during that time. If but. you're a cosplayer like me, you've probably been chomping at the bit for a chance to wear your costumes. I know I am. That's going to be a really great one. They put on a huge spread. They have that beautiful, uh, you know, newer um, a civic, you know, uh, yeah, the community civic center, center, civic yeah, center. Nice. And uh, we'll be there as well. Arcade games, video games, Gundam, Gunpla. We'll all be there in attendance as well. So it's always a great time, guys. Be sure to mark your calendars. And hey, if you want to go, go. But if you don't want to go, don't ruin it for everybody else. Yeah. So enough said with that. But anyways, guys. So I hope you, uh, yeah, join us. Hey, Janet, what's going on? Um, but yeah. So I think those are all the announcements that we have available. I don't think there's anything else pertinent. I think that pretty much covers us. For Build and paint night every Thursday night Build here. Paint night every Thursday. Bring in, um, make, bring in your cosplay, your model kits, whatever you guys want to work on. Come on in. Mm -hmm. Say hi to everyone. We got a large selection of Gundam models. New stuff coming all the time. And guys, we've got more tools. Oh, of course. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it. So we got more tools, more epic goodness coming our way. We have, um, Ben and I have been talking about just introducing as much variety as possible. And we actually get that quite a bit where people come into Flynn's um, and say, man, I didn't realize there was so much 
options, so many options here, so much, um, so many different varieties. Our pricing, we try to keep as affordable as possible. We have everything from perfect grades all the way down to SDs. We have a lot of those kits that don't require any tools or um, glue or not, yeah, I guess nippers even, where, you know, the Pokemon kits, um, I'm super stoked for the Millennium pu or the yeah Millennium Puzzle, right? Yeah, the Millennium, Millennium Puzzle. puzzle. Yu -Gi -Oh. Hopefully, Yu-Gi-Oh that one comes in. That should be pretty cool. Um, the, I know there's new 30 minute mission things going on with uh, the girl kits. Yes, the is 30, there, 30 minute sisters. The one. 30 minute sisters, and then we also there's like one. First batch is mine. The first batch is yours. Okay. <laughs> you gotta All fight right. me for. So we have we have those kits coming in as well. And we have, oh, we have gun markers now. Yes. A variety of colors. We got the metallic ones. We got pretty much all the basic colors. So if you have like some of the coating kits that you don't have the, like you don't want to use uh, the straight colors. Sorry, of course. Of course so uh, Weeb Fox 100 says, Wing Zero totally dodged the falling lamp. Yeah, he dodged the lamp and you notice the, the Leo exploded. That is very ironic. <laughs> the grunts, who, right? The people who could that... have thought the Leo would explode at the drop of a hat? Right, aren't that's what they, weren't that what that's they, all these guys do for, right? Die by the hundreds. So of course the lamp falls and hits them. Exactly, uh, but everything's put back together. So yeah, back. guys, we have a ton of variety of different <laughs> kits. You guys can come and check out. So we're open tomorrow from five to twelve, ten dollar Tuesday, and we've gun stuff as well. Right. So what do we got going on, Ben? Today, what all do you right, want to do? Let's go ahead and go to camera two. Now that I got these awesome. guys. All right, you got it. Go for it, dude. Um, one thing I want to talk about this week was Gundam Wing. Um, we rent, we mentioned Gundam Wing probably quite a bit. But if you're an American fan, especially a slightly older one, Gundam Wing was probably your introduction to Gundam. This ran on Cartoon Network for a long time in the late 90s. Oh my gosh, I forgot to mute my phone. Oh, one second. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Go for it, Ben. <laughs> we're not talking about Power Rangers, we're talking about Gundam. All right, so Gundam Wing was probably a lot of American fans' introduction to Gundam. Okay. Um, ran for a long time on Cartoon Network. Okay. Um, the, at one point, you could find the toys in Toys R Us. Uh, but uh, Gundam Wing's kind of making a revival. It's coming back. All right. It's got a manga that's been ongoing called Glory of the Losers. All right. Um, the model kits are coming out now, like a lot of the older ones that we maybe didn't didn't get. Like I had the Mercurius and the V8 last time. That was a model kit I've been waiting for for a long time. Um, almost all the main Gundams from the show now have gotten updated modern model kits. There's only a few left that are going to be coming out soon. Um, the Death Side is one we have pre-ordered, so we'll have that here. Death Side always goes quickly. Death Side very popular design. But um, one of my favorites, and it was a, ser a suit that never got a lot of love back in the day, was the mainline grunt mobile suit of the show, which was the Leo. And that's this guy you have here. The Leo was kind of like the Stormtrooper equivalent in the show. Okay. Just tons of them, mostly faceless. You never saw the pilots. And to be honest, they were there to pretty much bite it by the hundred because the Gundams are insanely powerful and these guys would just get wasted. And you don't think too much of them in the show, but especially when you see the artwork, it's a very unique grunt design. Like a lot of it evokes, like you look at this and you think Zaku. Yeah, no, 100%. It's got even that, the color. It's got that color. It's got the single eye, even though it's kind of like a square camera. And it's kind of the same thing. You would see one type of mobile suit, but they would have tons of different equipment in the show based on what was happening. Some guys were set up for flying, some guys were set up for ground assault and everything like that. Um, the Leo model kit on its own is pretty basic, but uh, P Bandai, they released this really nice expansion pack, the Leo weapon set, which comes with a oh. Leo, comes with one Leo and all the equipment that he used throughout the show. So you get tons and tons of stuff. And you ha I have three of them here set up using different armor configurations. Like you have this one with this large, oversized bazooka. This one over here has some additional shoulder armor with some cans. It's kind of like a heavy assault variant. And it also has a parachute container backpack. It also has these uh, leg boosters that you could use for like a flight form. And there's also a space version, which is probably the one you saw most in animation. We use like this cylindrical backpack in space with boosters on it. But in addition to these, just what you see here, you get a ton of additional equipment like you can see here. Yeah, I see it right there. Yeah, you get like a flight backpack, multiple different versions of the beam rifle, the Dang. large Dober gun. And that all came in the P Bandai box? All came in the P Bandai box. The only thing is you only get one basic Leo. Um, I already bought two, but these are so cheap. You can get these for like anywhere between like 15 to $20, depending on where you go. Like you can still find these at a lot of Hobby Lobbies. Okay. Senpai, can we get help with the camera? Hang on, lock it down. 
We, we got a new camera, people, so we're working the kinks out of that way because it's on a swivel. Yeah, I can't get it to hold still. There you, you go. All right, so it. Senpai's got it. Shout out to Silverback Senpai. All right, thank you. <laughs> so, what were you guys so what were you saying? Pointing at the Leos. Yeah. But um, in the show, these are kind of run-of-the-mill grunt suits. Like, they don't really do a lot because they're basically just there to bite it by the 100. But it is a really unique design. Okay. And there's a lot of options in this for army building, especially if you get the weapon set. Right. Because you can have hooked up with tons of different equipment and stuff like that. Like even this one, the leg boosters, I just, it's not normally paired with the shoulder armor. I just thought it looked good. And if you want to, switching between them is fairly easy. You can just pop that off. Oh, they all have the same like peg configuration. Right. And all you right, can just superb. swap on this different backpack. And then you're good to go. So then he's got like a flight set. Ah, okay. Yeah, and the we the weapon set you could only get this through the P the P Bandai website. I ordered these back in October, but this has come out before. Like this is like their second or third release of it. So keep your eyes on P Bandai if you're interested in this. It'll probably come out again, but you can still get it on eBay. What was the total investment like for when when you got it? When I got this and the Mercurius and the Day, the total thing all together with shipping was sixty five dollars for all the kits. Right. A little bit high because you do pay more for the P Bandai stuff, right? And it's not this—it's not like a typical release. Like uh, most of the P Bandai stuff, like the, the the detail is slightly lower because it's limited release. It's not made for general. Release. Oh, okay, okay. So like certain parts, like this backpack, it's well detailed, but it is only two pieces. Uh, Whereas if this was normal release, some of these parts might be color separated. But this is intended for more like the premium market. Like if you were going to paint your model kits anyway. That's okay. really the target audience for this. But you could probably pick this up on resellers for anywhere between $35, $40. Isn't that bad? Not too bad. Like on eBay? Especially considering you get the base mobile suit. You get one Leo in this and then enough weapons to where if you already have a few to equip two or three other Leos. And oh, these are perfect, so cheap though. and they look so good in like a squad. You want like three minimum in my opinion. Well, I mean, even every single time the weapons accessory kits come for mm. the weapons option kits come for the 30-minute missions, they sell almost immediately. Because it's a very easy way to customize your kit. And the good thing about the Leo stuff is, like, their weapons are so, like, utilitarian and, like, down-to-earth. Like, I love these drum machine guns. You could put these on 30-minute missions kits, and they fit right in with that aesthetic. So there's quite a bit of variety in it. And even the beam rifle, like here, you can swap out that barrel. Right. for a shorter barrel if you want a different kind of looking rifle. And just like I said, between all these all these different guys, you get a ton of different weapons. You also get like this shoulder mounted toe style bazooka. Nice. It, like looks it almost looks like the kind of stinger missile launcher like that Snake would use in Middle Gear Solid. We have a comment here from Daniel. He says, "Imagine if the Leo was in real grade or master grade version." Yeah, I would not mind seeing this in master grade because we've already got the master grade tall geese. Mm -hmm. And in the context of Gundam Wing, um, part of the story is, like, the whole reason why the Gundams are on Earth is the scientists, like, 15 years prior, were developing mobile suits for the Earth Federation. Okay. The Earth Federation basically took their design and said, we don't want your design. We're going to make a cheaper, like, mass-produced version. And that was the... First, it was the Tall Geese, and then they scaled it down into the Leo. <laughs> so if you look at the Tall Geese and look at this guy, it's a very... They're very obviously based on the same unit. This is basically the... the Tall geese without its helmet and its backpack, very similar. The geo of the Gundam world. Yeah, basically, <laughs> they, they, they took they took they took a, they took something that was good like for rally racing and, and stripped it down to something that was basically just held together with duct tape. I mean, the joke is is that you could breathe on these guys and they would explode in the show. They were made oh, of like explosion. All right, right on. And yeah. this is from uh, the Gundam Wing. Gundam Wing. The only okay. time these were not junk is when the main characters would pilot them for some reason. Oh. They would just randomly show up in like a different color, either purple or blue, and suddenly they would be really tough to kill. <laughs> they were new types, right? Or it was just because they, they were that good of pilots. Oh, there, are, there, are no, okay. there are no new types in Gundam Wing. Oh, there's, okay. just, All right. there's just crazy super soldiers who are <laughs> suicidal and will do anything to survive. <laughs> but yeah, Gundam Wing. Um, and the other cool thing we should segue into, one of the reasons I'm bringing in all this Gundam Wing stuff, is Gundam Wing is now free on YouTube through the Gundam Official for I believe the next couple of weeks. It might be even longer than that. But if you want to watch the anime, you never got to see it back in the day on TV, you can see it officially on the Gundam official YouTube, subtitled in HD. This is the remaster. So we'll go ahead and play a little clip from this. There's no sound, people. Just to bear in mind. So you see the transformation take place. Yes. 
Dang, that's pretty dope. Dude, when I was a kid, this was the coolest thing. Oh, there's a Leo. Yep. And it's going to explode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. See, there's that, there's that uh, backpack. The parachute. Now, what Gundam are these? What model Those is that? Those are one? the Ares. There's a, all the uh, Grunt mobile suits in this show were right. based off the Zodiac. So oh, okay. So they had, like, uh, the... The Leo, Cancer, the, the arrow. Leo, there was a Capricorn. Very cool. Man, that detail. What year is this? Uh, Gun and Wing was 95. Dang, look at that. It's better than some modern movies. Dang. <laughs> Those two guys are gone. Yeah. Holy it, the crap. grunt suits do not tend to fare very well in Gun and Wing. Holy crap. All right, so yeah, if you guys want to check it out, um, Ben just pointed it out. It's on... Gundam info on YouTube, mm -hmm. totally free, and we are watching, yeah, right yeah, on, on our YouTube. It looks series. like it just came up on the 28th of April. Yeah, like all 50-something episodes are on here. So you can, by all means, check that out if you want to. It's totally right. free don't have charge. to wait. Don't have to wait on streaming or get any uh, DVDs or anything. It's all in HD right on YouTube. Now, if someone wants to get into Gundam Wing, like, straight out of the gate, where do they start? Uh, like, honest, to understand about it. Honestly, the show, the show that's is... That's where you start, okay. It's Gundam, but this is one of the ones that's completely standalone. Gundam Wing is not predicated on any former Gundam knowledge. It's its own universe. All the lore is within itself. Okay, perfect. So it's not related to other shows. And there's not, like, a ton of extended material. There's a couple mangas, but none of them are required to really understand the story. Um, the most you get is, like, there's a bit of a prequel with the movie. Like, they give you, like, a little bit of what happened to the characters before the show. But even that, it's pretty all self-explanatory in the movie. And I believe the movies are on YouTube for free as well. So if you want to get into Gundam Wing, that's probably a place to start. Best place is movies. the show. Okay, the shows. Right. And then if you want to... Is there a manga for it? There are mangas for it, but um, the one that's running right now is like a retelling of the series. Oh, okay, okay. With like these updated designs from the movie. Oh, okay. So the mobile suits look different. The art is really, really good, but the story is slightly changed from the way it appeared in the animation. It's like modernized. Yeah, it's modernized. The art's updated. Some of the writing's slightly changed, but in general. But those Leos look great. And what what's like if you want to pick up a Leo kit, you say like 15, 20 bucks? You can, I know, have we had them here before? We have, and they tend to go pretty quick because they're so cheap and because they're so customizable. I think Omel got them because he like built an army. I think we them. have these. I think we have them for anywhere from 15 to $18. Right, 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 right. And that's about the average price you'll find them in most hey, places. Hey. I know Hobby Lobby carried them for a long time. That's where I right. got one of the guys here because Hobby Lobby had that half off coupon. Yeah, that 40% off right, coupon. Right, and it was hard to beat that. <laughs> but um, this one I really do recommend. If you're going to get you really, if you're gonna get one, you really should try to find the time and get three of them because they always look better in groups. And, you know, got to give them a fighting chance. Against a gun, they need numbers. They haven't got a chance on their 100%. own. 100%. And you know what? Speaking of that, if you are looking to pick them up, I mean, obviously, if you're local, South Florida, by all means – you know, stop on by, join us. But we do have a special shout out, kind of just to say thank you to the Gundam Place. Gundam Place store. Yeah, these guys are in Atlanta. Um, I did uh, an event with them a few months back in December to help promote their store. And they were also the gracious provider of one of the other kits I will talk about right now. Go ahead. Oh, they're really cool. Mess again. around with them a bit. They were the gracious provider of this next kit I will be talking Ooh. about. Ooh. And once again, guys, the Gundam Place store is a, I would call it a mom and pop, you know, small, smaller store. Yeah, it's another store run by a fan. Um, he got into Gundam after he made a trip out there, and he's a accomplished builder now himself. So if you're interested in just the hobby in general, worth checking out his Instagram and stuff, too, because he's a very, very good builder. And, I mean, this website's super simple to navigate. They're in they're, Georgia, they're I nice believe, right? Website. Yeah, they're, they're based they're in, in Georgia. Alpharetta, I believe. But when I went, yeah, Alpharetta. I know when I went out there, they had the little pop-up store in the mall for the holidays. Right. I believe now they are just online, but they sell model kits, conversion parts, uh, LEDs, a lot Dang. of stuff to customize your models. And like check I said, check them out. Check them out. You know, it's always good to support fellow builders and fellow stores and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. And if you're local, by all means, come on by. But even not, I mean, we can't carry everything in the world, so check them out as well. Right. And as I said, they graciously provided me with this beautiful kit. This is the Wing Zero Custom. This is a Verka kit. Um, I've mentioned Verka a few times in the past on the streams, but Verka is designed by Hajin Katoke, and they're usually Holy crap. top of the line in terms of detail and complexity. And these are always the ones that are really 
pushing the medium of Gunpla as far as it can go. This is a fairly recent one. I believe it just came out late last year. But um, this is the one of the titular mobile suits from Gundam Wing. Um, to get a little bit into the story, um, the year is like, it's like a 170 of the after colony calendar. So everyone's living in space and you have the colonies which are trying to be independent from the Earth. Because the Earth is like a mayhem? Because the, the Earth is like, a, it's basically like an autocracy. All the people on Earth are like the, the bourgeois, you okay. know. And everyone in space is kind of like, you know, downtrodden and, and, and you know, they're... <laughs> they're, they're living in space. They're, they're struggling to survive. <laughs> they're living in space. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> the people on Earth are just getting, you know, fat and rich and they're not really concerned with what happens in the colonies. Well, five of these scientists who were developing mobile suits for the Earth Alliance decide they're going to rebel against the Earth Alliance and Oz, which is like the their military faction. For the Earth Alliance. <clears throat> for the Earth Alliance. So they develop these five mobile suits called the Gundams, and their idea is to go down, send them down to Earth, and cause havoc and destroy Oz. <clears throat> But through a series of different, through a series of a lot of political machinations, things don't turn out that way at one point. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> at, at one point, um, Oz basically turns their weapons on the colonies and says, if these guys don't surrender, we're just going to blow up the colonies completely. You know, we, we're, we don't care about you guys anyway. Holy crap. But, um, yeah, the Gundam pilots for a long portion of the show are pretty much fighting on the back foot. But um, what gives them such an advantage over normal mobile suits in the show is they are made out of a special metal called Gundanium. Gundanium is a practically indestructible, super lightweight metal that can only be made in space. So when these show up on Earth and they're just laying waste to all these other mobile suits, they know where they came from because the only place they can make that metal is the colonies. And the colony, like, exports it or sends it to Earth? No, the, the colonies are... They're like uh, their own independent... Each colony is like its own independent nation. Oh, okay. And they don't support the Gundams because, you know, they're obviously making themselves a target by supporting them. But at the same time, they don't exactly like the stuff the Earth Alliance is doing anyway. Okay. But uh, the Wing Zero specifically, when the Gundam scientists get together, this was the first mobile suit they designed. Um, it's an incredibly powerful mobile suit. Its cannon can take out multiple mobile suits in a single shot. And it's also incredibly fast, heavily armored, and it's equipped with a special computer system, which is signified by this gem in the chest called the Zero System. What the Zero System does is it's a battle computer that directly interfaces with the pilot's mind. And what it will do is it will analyze all the information on the battlefield and give the pilot information about which battle plan will guarantee victory all the time. Whoa. But the problem is, is this system does not take into account the lives of people on the battlefield or even the life of the pilot. So it will achieve victory at the cost of huge casualties up to and including the death of the pilot. And a lot of people get in the suit and the system will drive them borderline insane. Like uh, there's a really great scene in the show where Catro, one of the Gundam pilots, who is normally this very quiet, reserved, and very kind person, he goes out of his way not to kill people, he ends up getting the Wing Zero, building it, and he goes out to try and you know, accomplish his mission, and the computer starts to mess with his head. And it tells him, you know, the best way to stop all the war? Destroy the colonies. No more war. And he starts just going around blowing up these colonies with this giant cannon, because this gun can easily take out a colony. Where did the computer, was a computer created by, by the people? It or? was created by the scientists, but it was kind of like they, they thought of this system to give them that tactical edge, but didn't think it through to the end, like what it could do. And it was so powerful, they said, okay, we can't, this is too powerful for our plan. So when it went, it was destroyed completely. And then the scientists took their information and each went to a different colony and built their own Gundam using this as a baseline. So all the Gundams oh. in the show are based off of this one. What Catra does is he finds the plans for the Wing Zero, doesn't realize how dangerous it is. He builds it with the idea of he's going to go out and continue his mission, and then this system ends up being really, really dangerous. Dang. But yeah, the Zero system is a, a, really pivotal, a, really, a really pivotal point of the story because a lot of the pilots end up using the system at one point or another, and it's able to show them like different scenarios in the future, and they're, they're trying to pick the path 
that they want to be on in line, and this system kind of helps direct them towards that. Does path. the pilot have to engage what path to take, or does the AI understand and just implement it on its Usually own? it's just the AI showing them a, a series of horrible, horrible things, and they're like, I don't want that to happen. I'm going to do whatever the system is telling me, but the opposite. So a lot of it is things like that. Dang. And you have one point, they're able to hook up this system. Like the, the villains of the show basically get a hold of it. Um, and one of the main villains of the show is Trey's, who's like a, an aristocratic, like a um, leader of Oz. And his thing is he makes an Epion system, but it's, it works differently. It's called the uh, Epion system, and that's built into the Epion Gundam. And that's even more brutal than the other one because it, it, it's even more likely to make the pilot go crazy. But, uh, and then even later, the system is hooked up to a bunch of remote-controlled like drone mobile suits called mobile dolls. So you have armies flying around in space all under the control of this incredibly powerful combat system. And pretty much the Gundam pilots are the only ones that can stand toe to toe with it because of their incredibly powerful mobile suits and intense training. But to get a little bit into the model kit itself, I talked a lot about Gundam Wing. Um, this is based on the appearance of the Wing Zero in the movie. In the movie, all the designs were kind of updated and made more complex. But in the context of the movie, it's treated as this is not an upgrade. It's just this is the way it always looked. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. In the show, it never had these angel wings. It just had like a like standard Gundam style wings, and it would turn into a jet. This will still transform, but in the movie, it would never transform. These wings would close around it. So it could re-enter the atmosphere and have like a shield, but it would not transform into like a flight mode. This model kit incorporates a lot of stuff into it that was never in the animation. Um, most notably, it comes with a shield, which it never used in the animation. Hmm. And this is part of the transformation as well. The shield will be like the nose cone. Okay. And a lot of mechanical details, like the way these wings, these are actually on hinges and they're able to open up. That's not something they did in the animation. They just add it for extra detail on the model kit. But probably the most notable feature, and someone's already mentioned it in the chat, is this iconic pose. The final scene in the movie is the Wing Zero firing this cannon at this hardened bunker. And it's the enemies of the basically the movie, and they're all, ah, you can't get us. We destroyed all your weapons, and we're in this impenetrable fortress. Hero just comes up and goes, let me confirm, you guys are secure? Your fortress is secure? He goes, of course it is. See for yourself just how powerless you are just starts firing into it. Three shots completely wipes out the base. But uh, this model kit is the first one they've released that is actually capable of doing this pose. Really? Because it has a lot of really advanced joining in it. The shoulders are on hinges and slide forward. And uh, the arms have these little plugs. You can kind of see it. These plugs come out of the bottom of the gun. The armor on the arm slides back and the gun pegs into it, so it's very secure and it can hold it in that double pose. I have the perfect grade model kit, which is like twice the size of this, and it's a much more expensive, much more complicated kit, but it cannot do this pose. Dang. So this is- And what year did this kit come out? This just came out last year. The perfect grade came out many, many years before, I wanna say 2000, so it's an older one. An older kit. But in terms of like how, how well engineered of a model kit, this is as good as the Wing Zero has ever looked it looks gorgeous and they work a lot of other things into it too like um when it shows up in the movie it doesn't have this gun it just has the sword and there's nowhere on here that you can see to, to transport this gun right no you had to hold it so you always kind of wondered in the sh when you were watching the movie where did he get the gun did he go to some base at a different scene and pick it up like they, he had it hidden um what they did with this is they actually put in a gimmick to where these guns can fold and they will store kind of hidden inside the wings which is something they were never able to do on other model kits. So they work in that as well. But that was never in the show. He just had the gun. Never in the show. He just had it. You don't know why. So okay. it's almost like a retcon. So they're explaining where it, went, where it came from. And there's some other neat little effects, like uh, when the Zero system is active in the show, the only visual signifier that it's happening is the pilot is acting different, and usually like the eyes are glowing. On this, they include a neat little effect where the ears on either side of the head open up, to like show these radiator fins coming out like the system is active. So they do a few little things like that to give it some extra flavor. And um, if you're reading the recent manga, remember how I said like the designs are updated? Right. 
in the anime in the art for the uh, manga, this is what it looks like. So they give it a really good makeover in the manga. Sean asked, so this is the, uh, this isn't the real, no, this is not the real grade. This is the no, master this grade. is the master grade. And we actually this have this one here okay. at Flynn's. If you guys are interested in it, we have two more of these here. You guys are selling this one for, let's see, $63. And you can, guys can get the Wing Zero Custom. We only got two more of these. I will say, um, if this is your first Gundam model kit, a bit much to bite off to chew for a first one. Um, not like a real grade, because not like a ton of small parts, but there are quite a few small parts. Just because, like I mentioned, like the little radiator yeah, things no, in the 100%. head. percent Very small parts. And if you want to get into, like, more detail, this is just straight build with sanding and a pretty clean build. I haven't done any painting, no decaling, no model, no model markers or anything to it. But if you want to go further, they include, as with so many Vercock kits, this gorgeous huge sheet of water slide decals you could spend days applying all these water slide decals they always give you a lot so if you don't like these specific kind of look because to me it always kind of seems strange for what is essentially a paramilitary group to cover their suits and logos and warning They're decals winning. and things but if you like Girl. if you like that look that verka is known for they give you a lot of options to do that and these are not stickers these they're transfers. Not, they're he, water slides. Yeah, these are not heat transfers. They're, they're water slides. These are the premium decals. We had a couple people. Lore Lee says, love the Wing Zero, but two or, but two real grade versions painted different colors and a master grade version. Right. So that, a, someone modified it themselves. This is a very popular suit. Um, it's a little... Some people are still torn on it even years later. Some people don't like the angel look. I think it's a very good hero suit. And something slides. to keep in mind is because some people don't like the hero look. Let's go ahead and switch back to the other camera. Okay. We have another one here they might like. This is actually a slightly lower okay. price point, too. For $59, you can get the Proto Wing Zero. Ooh. The Proto Wing Zero, this is a bit closer to what it looked like in the animation. Okay. Like in the original series, you can see how it didn't have the angel wings. It's yeah. just got like these kind of like uh, angular wings hanging off its back. Same kind of armor, um, same kind of weaponry, two large beam cannons. But the design is a little more reserved. Um, the transformation is a little bit different. Um, comes with the same kind of shield. So this, when you look at the design for the shield for the custom, they're pretty much taking it from this suit. It's not the same mold, but just the design is similar. Um, the Proto Zero, this refers to in the manga, they still have the Wing Zero, but it looks like this. This is also a little bit different from it looked in the animation, but it's more of a style change. Like okay. it's, just, it's a little more angular, a little more aggressive. So it's not 100% what it looked like in the animation, but also a very good kit. And in terms of looks, pretty much on par with this. Some details are different. Like this has a lot of you can see like the gray armor showing through panel openings. Yeah. Not as yeah, prevalent. I was gonna say you can't see it. Not much. as prevalent on this because that's a style they've been doing only recently with Master Braids, but still a very good kit. So if you're one of the people that were torn on the design, you didn't really like the way it looked in the movie. Right here, this is your guy to go go to and can do the iconic poses where it splits the rifle in half has all the gimmicks on it and a gorgeous kit in its own right especially because of that updated look from the glory of losers someone manga. asked a question so your user says is the wing the favorite of your wing units Ooh, um hmm. my favorite wing unit is probably the mercurius and the bay 8 the ones i had last right, one. right right but of the gundams i think my favorite is probably the heavy arms Heavy Arms is a favorite. Someone said that. It says, huge fan of Heavy Arms. Everybody loves Heavy Arms because they had all the, all the super weapons on it. But Wing Zero, I was never one of the people that was divided on it. I actually built a costume out of this guy, so I must like it. I had, like, the giant one with the wings and everything. I keep on forgetting I even built that. <laughs> so, yeah, Wing Zero is one of my favorites, but I probably lean towards the Heavy Arms if I had to pick. We have a bunch of comments coming through. Crazy number of slides. Yes, that is a lot of number. A lot of. Oh yeah, Verkaz are infamous for the sheer number of decals they always come with. Dang. So it says Daniel says in Latin America, Wing Zero is called El Palomo for the detail of its wings and transformation like a giant white dove. Yeah, I could see this. I, Gundam Wing was a, an anime that was very popular in Southern America as well. A lot of. Um, Slightly older anime was popular because uh, 
it would just get released out there more frequently than it would in America. Like, there was less, like, uh, legalities with getting it over there. Okay. Same thing in Italy and a lot of South American countries. So, um, Wings Era has, like, a lot of penetration in different markets. Whenever I, like, put up pictures of cosplay, I do see, like, a lot more likes from Italy and, like, a lot more likes from Brazil and South American countries. You're familiar with it. So, there's definitely an audience there for it. You Dang. know what I mean? And, like I said, if you, if you grew up on Gundam or, like, you grew up on anime in the 90s late or early 2000s, Gundam Wing was probably your real exposure to Gundam. Um, I knew what Gundam was already when I was in high school, but the first Gundam I watched was Gundam Wing. And so, for going back to the kit, you said it's a lot to chew for someone who's for, this would be your first kit. What were, for this particular kit, what were some things that you would recommend to look out for sp- if you're building it? Definitely the radiator fins on the head because they're very, very small. And there was one part I had to glue, which is these lower blue sections on the chest fence. They're very loose in there, and I, I personally just put a tiny little drop of super glue to secure them in there, and that's that's pretty much it. It's not a part that has to move. It's not a part that slides or anything with the armor, so it doesn't affect the kit at all. The other thing to keep in mind is the mechanism for these guns that make them fold. These side panels have to unlock, and then you fold it. If you try to force it without unlocking them, the joint is very, very small. You can break it very, very, very easily. So you want to be careful with it. And then you have to get them stuck in the open, posi- the out position. Yeah, it, you can see here. I kind of overstressed one, so the gun is on this side, drooping down ever so slightly more than the other. Eventually, when I go through and paint this, I will bring it out and strengthen it up again. But uh, beautiful looking. But this kit. is a straight build. No line. No straight panel build, lining. No, no nothing. panel lining. No nothing. I will come back to that at some point. The most I've done to this, I've done some sanding to uh, remove pegs completely so when I do do painting, you won't see anything at all. But yeah, a gorgeous model kit. Any fan of Gundam Wing, I would definitely recommend you check it out. And once again, this is brought to you guys by the, the Gundam, Gundam Place. Place. In Atlanta. In Atlanta, they get, they was one of the kits that Ben had acquired while he was up there. Right, and some other accessories it does come with is it comes with some parts to where you can display this in the transform mode, and these parts will allow it to still be displayed on a stand. It comes with the shield, which you never really saw in animation, but it's good to have. Comes with two two beam sabers, and these are slightly different from the normal one. The blades are curved. I like that. So they have a bit of an action to them. You get this wonderfully tiny, but super detailed little laser etched figure of the pilot. <laughs> Dang, that you is You barely small. see it the camera that is there, but tiny. It's, it's laser etched. So you look at it up close, you can even see details like for his hair. <laughs> so it's really, really great. They're getting really good with these little mini ones. And you also get the standard assortment and I'm, I'm glad they're going back to these now, of the plug-style hands. These are not fully posable hands. They're little plug-style ones that go in, but they're more secure than the fully posable ones. And it does come with this action base, just so you guys know. So if you're buying a model kit of the Wing Zero just to have this iconic pose, this is the one that has the stand. I have the Perfect Grade, which looks glorious. I've got it painted and everything. It's got light up in it, but it does not have a stand. There's no way to even attach a stand to the Perfect Grade. Well, really? The Master Grade does. So, so what'd you do with it? Just stand it it's up? It's just standing, looking really beautiful, but that's all it can do, yeah, really. Holy crap. As much as I like it, it's too heavy to really put on a stand. So we have, Daniel says, because Bandai doesn't bring Nataku to the trade yet, sad by what? Wufei? Wufei. Wufei? Yes, Nataku is one of the Gundam pilot, uh, one of the Gundams, okay. and it's piloted by the Gundam pilot named Wufei. Um, he's a really popular character, especially because he, w- he was one of the first in Gundam that was Chinese. Oh, and so they didn't have like so a lot of people there like from that area and this stuff have a certain attachment to that character. Like I know he's really popular in the Philippines and China and stuff like that because you don't see you see like a lot oh, of Gundam guys that are just Japanese and nothing else. And then Lore Lee says, has anyone actually painted those pilot figures? Yes, I know a lot of people... Pa- <laughs> I've seen them being painted. A lot of people paint these, believe it or not, with toothpicks, but it can be done. <laughs> that seems like that seems like a lot. It's a bit much for me, but lot, I know people a lot, do a lot. Because they just stand by the figure, right? Or below it, they yeah. don't even go inside of it. But the great thing, too, is you can't even see in the detail, but he's doing the, the pose from the opening animation, and we're just doing this. Like a thing yeah. in anime in the 90s was just people looking at the back of their hand for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is like really tiny. Holy crap. Yeah, you could break this very easily. I mean, if it wasn't for the L game in the shop, I would have gotten the Pro Zero. Pro Zero. I can't blame you for getting the L gun because that was one that's going to be rare. I don't think they're going to be making a bunch more of those in the future. I think we have a couple of them left. We have two of these guys left here, and we have two of the TV version left here as well. 
So if you guys missed out on these, we bought like 10 of the, of the movie version and we've only got two left. I've got a few more in order, but like I said, that's one of the ones people want because it was on the show they saw as a kid. Worth getting. Sean says, I painted those pilots. Really, Sean? What did you use? Well, he does minis, man. I guarantee yeah, he does really I minis. guarantee he probably used a toothpick at some point. Watch. But yeah. I just painted it one color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he fell into like a bucket of paint. Why not? But yeah. It's a beautiful kit, man. Once again, shout out to the Gundam Place in Atlanta for supplying me 100%. with this one. 100%. Um, I used it for a little commercial I did for them, so that was the trade-off. But yeah. Very fun kit to build. Very cool. Yeah, you guys can check it out while Ben pivots too. I think we have a couple of the kits that you wanted to show right. off. Um, so a few different things. I just wanted to show off things. a few things we got on the recent order that I know people have been asking about. So I will put these aside and talk about these. Um, for anyone that was a fan of the Re-Rise series that was going on, I know we had a lot of people asking about when we were going to get some of the Re-Rise stuff. When were we going to get Core Gundams back in? Well, we finally got some Core Gundams. This is the Mercone unit, so if you already have a Core Gundam, this is one of the armor packs you can get to turn it into one of the different units from the show. Once again, this needs the Core Gundam on its own, but you get all this armor so you can add on to it and make it into a different version. And if you missed out on the Core Gundam before, you can get the Earth 3 Gundam. The Earth 3 Gundam is the Earth 3 armor plus the Core Gundam. So you could buy this kit and this armor and combine them into different ones. Or if you just want the uh, support weapons for the Mercone, you have this set, which includes the gun and the backpack for the Mercone unit. Dang. And we have other ones as well. We have like the fake new weapons, but I know a lot of people were asking about these. Core Gundam is ridiculously popular. And these are at a very fair price. 16 bucks for the Earth 3. Um, worth picking up just for the Core Gundam alone, I think, if you're not a fan of the armors, like some of the other ones. Were, right, right. Some of the ones, like uh, they have the one in red, they have the one in like teal. But the Core Gundam on its own is great for customization. Um, and we got more of just the straight core guns coming. But if you want some of these armor packs, I would listen to you guys in the chat and the Discord and stuff you guys were talking about. Make sure to get some. Come on, guys. Pick some of these up. And we got plenty more stuff on the way. I cannot wait to get some of it and show some of you guys. We had some questions in the chat as well talking about, let's see what, I think it was Fruit. I would pay money for a Master Grade Planet Series Gundam. Oh, yes. Like seeing this in Master Grade. That would be so cool, like a master grade version of the Core Gundam, and you could actually buy the different armor packs. That would be awesome. <laughs> hey, if, if the age suits can get three and four and five master grades, why not? I would love to see the Core Gundam in master grade. That would be awesome. So are, are they? I know you picked up one more kit this week here from here, uh, Ben. Oh yeah, that you started working on my self control finally failed me because if anyone was in here looking at this bad boy on the shelf, I couldn't control myself. I had to buy it. I'm not made of stone. This is the Perfect Grade Unleashed. This is the newest of the Perfect Grade models. Let's that ain't gonna fit in the frame. Can, oh yeah, you can't squeeze <laughs> might, it in there. Might as well just keep it on the other one. Um, but yeah, this is the newest of the Perfect Grade line. Right. For those uninitiated, it's basically high grade to master grade, and then the tippy tip top is Perfect Grade. Perfect Grade are about twice the size of Master Grades. 1160, right? Right. Master Grades are 1100. These are 160. 160. The detail is way, way higher. The complexity is way, way higher. The price is much, much higher. You guys had this one on the shelf for 300. No, um, it was two. Oh, yeah, you're right. 300. 300. Holy crap. Um, I'll tell you now, anywhere you go online trying to find this guy, 300 is a very good deal. <laughs> right. Especially when you consider shipping for something this big. I mean, I wouldn't even want to think about it. So but, you got to pick it up locally. Yeah, the last time I bought a Perfect Grade, I bought it from HLJ when they were doing a sale, which was you had to buy something on this list. And if you did, everything else on your order was free shipping. And I only did this once because first thing I did was buy the cheapest thing I could find and a Perfect Grade to get $100 worth of free shipping. And they never did that deal again because they're like, ah, oh, man, I guarantee I was not the only one that figured who, it out. who hosed them for that. So you have this. I know the box is empty, you said. Yeah, the box is empty because I already have this on my bench at home. I'm going to try and stream building it. So if you guys want to check out my Twitch. But flip it over in the back because the back was interesting that you were showing me. Right. I wonder if they could see it in the other camera. Yeah, the let's camera. see if we can pivot it ever so slightly. Yeah, there you go, bro. Perfect. Perfect. Camera wants to move. But there you go. Here. Love it. The thing that makes the Unleash so special is this building process. You build the frame out and you can build it in stages so you can get this really nice just internal skeleton 
and nothing else if you want. You don't even have to build the armor on it if you just really like the mechanics. And it's a fully posable skeleton. Um, it's got like these metal style etching parts yeah, all over it to it, give it look like a crazy. look like frame. It's got moving hydraulics in it. And basically any pose you could make as a human, this model kit is able to do. It can touch its touch the top of its head with an arm, cross its arms behind its back, all kinds of things. And there's lots of cool gimmicks built into it. Like, Does it come with the LED kit? Yes, it comes with two styles of LEDs. One is in the sword. The actual saber lights up. And the neat thing is you can take that sword and when you don't have the sword extended, you plug the sword hilt into the backpack and then the light inside the sword lights up the boosters on the back of the robot. Dang. So it's got a really some nice effects in it. It's got LED unit for the head and in the chest as well. So the eyes light up as well as the vents in the chest. Um, some other neat gimmicks in it as well. The shield is attached with a magnet onto the arm, so it's super, super solid. Um, something that's different with this that was different from other perfect grades is perfect grades in the, ha in the past had perfectly posable hands. Every joint would be modeled. Right. With this one, they did not have fully posable hands, but the hand, you get like a skeleton, which is metal plated, and then the armor you build on top of it. So you see like shiny metal joints through the fingers. And it's, you don't have that full, pil full posability, but the hands themselves are really, really gorgeous looking. So this is a very, very nice model kit. I cannot wait to buy it. And you can see here some of the points is this opens on over 50 different panels on the body. Yeah, I saw that. So once it's put together, you can open the panels up? Open the panels like it's being maintained or under maintenance. So you can have it just like totally exploded. It comes with some really nice pilot figures so you can set up a diorama. Just like a lot of the Master Grades, the core fighter is replicated inside of it, so it has the transforming fighter for the cockpit. And just an insane, gorgeous level of detail. I cannot wait to buy it. To, to build it. To, you already I bought already it. bought it. What am so I saying? Like, yeah. I can't wait to build it. But this is going to be a multi-day project at minimum. But um, originally, these are very hard to get right now because there was a bit of a mishap. The ship that was carrying these... Um, sunk like off the coast of Hawaii, and so I know a lot of places were pre -order, had pre-orders out for them, right? And just they couldn't get them anymore. So there was a big delay, and then you put the COVID things on top of it, so everything's taken a long time. This is only the second one we've had out of I think five we originally ordered, but they're slowly getting more out there now. So if you guys were interested in them, we have more coming. It's just going to be probably a few more weeks before we see them. Um, and like I said, just the prices for some of them out there are getting kind of high because of that. But uh, be almost a good kid just to buy and hold. But good kid to buy and hold. I, I would say that would probably be a good investment. But um, or buy two. Buy two. That's <laughs> I'm tempted to buy two because I want to show it with the armor and without. But it's like I can't justify that just yet. Let me finish the one before I think about a second one. But, Once again, guys, that's a perfect grade. So yeah. in the scale of things, that's pretty much the most detailed version you're going to yeah, get. Yeah, and just to show you guys as well, this is the booklet for it. And it's like a see, magazine. This is like a magazine. Yeah, Holy this is crap. super, super thick. And this is a recent one, a recent release model kit. So everything that's inside here telling about the history of the model is in Japanese and in English. Oh, so beautiful. they tell you like the history of the model, all the stuff that went into it. They explain like the phases as you're building it, phase one all the way through five with all the hatches open. Just the book itself is glorious just for all the detail they put into it. And it's it's such a love letter to the original Gundam. I love it. But the instructions, this is a oh lot gosh. of parts. But um, I've only started building this, but there's some really ingenious things in here, the way they worked out the construction method. Let me see if I can bring the camera in a little bit closer. I think you'll be able to, and you'll also be able to uh, zoom in if you I think you would rotate the lens and it can zoom in as well. There you go. All right. Sent by his glorious camera. Yeah, there you go. The yeah, so, so bad. normally the runners are just labeled like A through B, et cetera, C, D. The runners on these, they have this neat little system where, like if you have a runner just for the waist, there's a little picture on there of the waist on the runner itself. So you could cut out the parts and have them in piles and basically build it in stages. So even though this is a very complex build compared to like a master grade or a high grade it's laid out in such a way that is so smart and so innovative for Gundam that it really is setting the bar to a new standard you think that they may have been toying around hey listen let's try this new form of instructions on this kit mm -hmm. see how it's received they're just trying to make things simpler and that's the thing is 
anything they can do to get more people involved, you know, reduce the reduce that entry that barrier for people that are maybe not. Well, into that's why, like the entry the entry grade kits are. I mean, right, are those, perfect. Yeah, and those are in the same vein where they just build straight down the runner, and there's no stickers and everything like that. There are stickers and decals and things for this, but even even despite the size and complexity. You don't need tools to build this. You don't need glue. It's very smartly designed. Um, really, the biggest hurdle for this is just the time it takes to build it because this is like a multi-day thing. I know you make jokes of like, I build everything in one yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even I'm not crazy enough to try this in one night. I'm talking like, this is probably going to take me a week minimum, especially because I just started a new job. But um, all the instructions very clearly laid out. Um, some of the inner parts, like the leg frame, comes already molded on the runner. You can see here it comes all as one part. Okay. And you just cut it off, and there's various. Here, tilt it up a little bit, the, the yeah. glare. The light's kind of washing yeah, it out a bit. Hot. No, turn the light off. No, you turn it off. Bam. Okay, there we go. But, um, like, the internal skeleton has a lot of detail, not just in posability. It has things like moving pistons, little vents, and things like that, access hatches. Lots of really cool stuff. This would be, if you're like a, I know some of the Warhammer guys are really into doing dioramas and stuff like that. If you wanted to do like a really cool diorama set piece for your show cabinet or something like that, having this set up in like a hangar with like the pilots on it and it's like in mid maintenance after a battle would just be beautiful and gorgeous. I, I just cannot wait to finally have it. I'm definitely gonna be putting it up in one of my cases as one of the centerpieces of my collection. Um, this will actually be the biggest version I have of the original Gundam. Um, the only one really bigger is like the one you have, the mega size. Yeah. yeah. That's very simple. <laughs> lovely model kit. I cannot wait to finish building this guy. I'll probably do a little bit tonight, but I gotta make sure I get plenty of sleep for the new job. I don't want to be falling asleep on my desk on the first week. So we have the perfect grade and I actually let uh, root user had a great idea. He said, so, in other words, free salvage. Care to invest on some fishing guys that you were the off-the-boat sunk, you said? Oh, go right, the, yeah. Go and get the Dude, packages. there's going to be some people that go down there one day thinking they found, like, lost treasure, and it's just going to be a container full of guns. Well, if you get to it soon enough, I mean, all the paperwork and stuff. It's just plastic. I mean, what, it's not what's going to happen to it. It's all in and, bags and, anyway. It's in bags anyways. Yeah. But the, the manual's not. There's some crabs or something down there that are having a time. That's all I do. Oh, crap. I would like the idea in more... Model kit model books. kit books. A few pages showing which parts are going to go where separately. I have a I have a couple huh. different like um, books from Japan, like Hobby Japan magazines, and they're obviously all in Japanese, but uh, they give you like really clear pictures on like those pick like a model kit for the month, and do like several people's uh, build of it and how you could upgrade it, you know, enhance certain things, or even just how to do a straight build. And it gives you like a lot of very clear pictures about what parts to sand off, which parts to sharpen up, um, which markers to use, and you even see details of which paints they use. So if you're into that, check out the Hobby Japan magazine. I know Tate's does get old yeah, they back. do have them. They get old back issues every now and then. I was there the other day, and they had one from like 2016. So it's just like I don't know where they get them from, but just randomly they seem to get them every now and then. Um, I also have a few. If you're part, if you're part of, if you're a local, um, let me know on Discord the weekend you're coming in, I'll bring in like the Vance airbrush books I have because I have ones like that that are not just for Gundam. There's Gundam in there, but it's also for airbrushing cars, planes. Okay. And it's in Japanese, but it's very clearly la laid out in pictures how to go about it, so you don't need to necessarily read the language. Okay. But it's nice to have that visual because hearing about it, you know, is one thing. Seeing what people did is one thing, but actually getting step-by-step -step pictures is a good thing too. Cool. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, hit me up on Discord. Maybe I can bring in some of these books on one of these days. Yeah, guys. So I threw the Discord link in there. Be, by all means, Discord, if you're not familiar with it, it's totally free to join. It's an application. Think of it like an uh, old school forum chat room kind of thing. Right. Where people are just going back and forth and totally free to join. Um, we uh, have the links there. And yeah, um, once again, if you're here on Thursdays or if you're around on Thursdays, pop in. You know, Let, uh, let Ben know if you want to like look at one of those books or you know figure out that next step or if you have questions even yeah and you know, I'll, honestly in. if you're just even if you're not familiar with gunning you just want to know about it come in hang out we have a good time we're always joking around um and if you want to get into like the anime movie thing we're going to be doing where you, that's usually where we're voting as to what's going to be next 
So come and check us out for that too. Exactly, and I don't have the link up anymore, but nonetheless, guys, that is this Saturday, August, or not August, I'm thinking I'm thinking about the, one of the conventions. May 8th. May 8th, this Saturday, May 8th, at 7 p.m. at Silver Spot Cinema in Coconut Creek, Florida. It's in the promenade, tons of free parking, food, all that kind of stuff, but if you can, Please let Ben know via email or via Instagram or Facebook, direct message that you do want to go. It's $5. Um, it is limited seating. Yeah. It's The whole theater is dedicated to us. This is a yes. legit movie theater. It is a night just for us. So if you want to come yes. and just scream at the theater for, for terrible, mo terrible movie jokes, that's why we did the Mystery Science Theater thing. Exactly. It's so perfect. so uh, that's this Saturday, guys. By all means, keep an eye out for that. Um, you know, may the fourth be with you. Tomorrow with the Bantha milk tea or the blue Bantha, uh, Bantha milk tea that we're gonna have here at Flynn's. We open from five to noon, and then we also have our uh, Gundam orders constantly coming in. Right. So if you're interested in something specific, hit up Ben, or just come into the shop and see what's going on. See yeah. what kids we have. A lot of good stuff coming in soon. So anyways, and uh, yeah. too, if you come out for the movie, uh, we're gonna be gathering in the lobby at seven. Look for me. I will have a Gundam helmet. You will not be able to miss me. Exactly. <laughs> right when you come in, for those who have never been there, right when you come in the main doors from the parking lot, there's two set of doors. Straight ahead. Just look straight ahead. Mm -hmm. You'll see where the lobby area is, and yeah. then we'll move. We'll direct everybody to the yeah, appropriate like theater. Yeah, like I said, they got like a full service bar. It's yeah. good food. It's good food. Everything like that. And uh, if you if you want to do your payment there, we'll do cash. Um, I have Zelle. We'll do digital. Yeah, yeah, pay. totally Whatever fine. You guys got. I'll even have the square. So if you have a card, I can do that. Totally right fine. Too. Just five dollars, and $5. the five dollars just goes to help us pay for the next one. Yeah. So <laughs> and if there's an anime movie you want to see, heck yeah, that's never been on, never been in theaters here. Hit us up. If there's interest for it, that might be the next one. Yeah. So far, we're looking at probably Red Line. Maybe one of the Gurren Logan movies That'd is the next cool. one. I know Demon Slayer just came out, so there are people seeing other anime movies. You know, maybe we get like Princess Mononoke or something like that on there. That would be cool to see. That'd, in be, that'd be really cool to see in theaters or Akira. Yeah. Akira, oh. to see that in theaters. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, by all means, we appreciate you hanging out with us this evening for the last hour and five minutes. Um, if you want to find Ben, his information is right below at Facebook or Instagram at Uber's Cosplay. That's U B E R S Cosplay on Facebook and Instagram. And, and of course, if you want to hit us up through Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or Flynn's Gaming FL, uh, that's F-L-Y-N-N-S, Gaming FL. And the last but surely not least, I wanted to let you guys know, I completely forgot at the beginning, we have picked our next date for our event, the School's Out Summer Bash here at Flynn's, June 12th, Saturday from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. There'll be food vendors here. There's, we're gonna put a bunch of new twists on stuff. So by all means, if you want to check that out. And then also on Sunday, we have our Mother's Day where moms play for free. And if you bring your kids, it's just 10 bucks for all day play here as nice. well. So yeah, whole little day and just kind of cool stuff. If you have any place to put the flyers, by all means, come and pick up a few. Love to spread the word. And we have some really cool giveaways. Ray has definitely given me a really cool giveaway, which I'm super stoked to uh, tell you guys all about later on. But anyways, guys, taking enough of your precious time. We appreciate you this evening. If we can help in any way, by all means, reach out to us and reach out to Ben. As always, if you have any questions or just want to chat, come on by. So, yeah, I think that's it. All right. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great night. Take care.